basically, Larry was my father. Uh, my dad died when he was when I was five, and since there was eighteen years difference between Larry and I, uh, it turned out that he raised me, and so our relationship was very very close, and I always felt like he was my father. He advised me and cared for me and did everything that a father usually does. And even though he called me sis all his life, he still treated me like I was his daughter. So we had a very close relationship. Well, he was just a very nice, warm feeling person. He was good. He was a good husband, a good father, a good brother, a good person. Everyone loved him. I don't know anyone that would ever have said anything about him that wasn't good. He cared for people, and uh, he really he really was a nice guy, I guess you would say. Uh, when I say that he was a nice guy, I don't mean that he was a quiet, meek little guy. He, he was wasn't that. He had a uh, he had a temper, and he uh, he yelled a lot, and he used foul language a lot, and uh, we we all ruffled his feathers now and then. He uh, he was, I guess, in quotes, he was bossy, <laughs> but we loved it. Uh, he, I I can't pin him down to any one thing, but uh, he he got irritated at little things. Uh, he wanted everybody to do the right thing, and when they didn't, it it, it bothered him. And uh, and he spoke up about it. He wasn't quiet about it. So, uh, you know, and, and that that was in the family. He didn't do that with strangers. Of course, that was limited to the family. He wouldn't do that to strangers. He always put on, you know, a nice face and a good smile. Uh, well, he he liked family gatherings. He liked to have his family around him on holidays. He liked good food. Uh, he liked to play cards with the family. And we used to have these, he liked to play these crazy poker games. And we used to have more fun. <laughs> it's, uh, you'd think it was gambling. We used to play for pennies. <laughs> and he liked all these silly poker games. Uh, he liked to play cards, though. Uh, he played a game, I guess a lot of people didn't, wouldn't have heard of it. It's called Klaviash, and uh, a lot of people wouldn't know about it. It's a very difficult game to play. And, uh, but you have to remember, being in show business, he spent a lot of time in dressing rooms, and they spent a, a lot of time together playing cards. So it was, a, it was quite a pastime. He was also a good reader. And he read a lot. Well, Mabel and Larry grew up almost together. They started in show business when they were both youngsters. Uh, Mabel was about 14 and Larry was uh, about 16. And they started together in a local uh, act called the School Act. And uh, of course their, their friendship grew into love and eventually they married. But uh, I knew Mabel from the time I was a little, really little girl. And she was never a sister-in-law. She was always a sister. Ted was a replacement for my father. <laughs> Ted was Uncle Ted from the time I was a little girl. He was the most marvelous man I, I've ever known. Uh, I used to travel a lot with Larry, with my mother, because uh, we didn't get to see too much of him when he was on the road, and uh, so we went whenever we could. And wherever we were, I, I was always on Ted's lap, because Ted adored children, and of course he had none. And he would drag me on the stage, force me to sing <laughs> on stage, and he was I was never more than a foot away from him when we were on the road. And uh, of course, when he died, I was heartbroken because I loved him dearly. 
Well, he was a perfectionist, and he, he demanded nothing less of them than he gave himself. He was very difficult to work for. Uh, Larry worshipped Ted, this I know, because we spent so much time together. I traveled uh, with Larry every chance. I shouldn't say I. I when I, I, I say we, I mean my mother and I, because I was a little girl. Uh, often people forget that I'm so much younger than Larry, and my mother would take every chance that she could to be with her son. She was so proud of him, and uh, we traveled with him whenever we could, and uh, I always was backstage watching the act, and it got to the point where I knew almost every line in the act. I still do. <laughs> Yes, Ted was real. Ted had talents that I think a lot of people didn't know about. Ted had a beautiful voice. Uh, well, he followed that old tradition, the Irish tenor. <laughs> he really was great. Joe Dorita is a, a sweetheart. That's all I can say. He's just the most wonderful guy. Uh, he's a good friend, and my husband and I both love him very, very much. Uh, we've spent a lot of time together, and uh, he's just a wonderful man. Well, he was very excited because uh, Larry, <laughs> in his own words, was a ham. <laughs> he loved it. He always said, I have no talent, and I'm just a ham. And he loved being with people and entertaining people. And uh, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with. Uh, money or popularity. It was being with people and talking to people that he loved. We were uh, in Atlantic City and uh, Larry was walking down the boardwalk. Uh, I'm trying to think of who he was with. Uh, oh, he was with my husband. They were working at Steel Pier in Atlantic City. And so they were walking down the boardwalk and a woman was walking down the boardwalk in the opposite direction with a little boy. And all of a sudden, this little boy got very excited, and he, mama, 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 and he was pulling her toward them. And he was jumping, and he was excited, and uh, this woman was paying no attention. Finally, she got very annoyed at the child, and she pulled him over to where my husband and Larry were standing, and she said, excuse me, sir, but will you please tell my son, he's, he, he's driving me crazy, please tell him you're not one of the stooges, are you? And he said, yes, I am. And we all thought that was so funny. She was absolutely certain that he wasn't, and the little boy knew. Well, um, the first few years he lived with his daughter, and then finally he went into the country home the Screen Actors Country Home, and he loved it there. He was uh, very popular with the people there, and uh, he was very active. He traveled around to colleges and schools, uh, raising funds for the home. Uh, he was, uh, the when he had the last stroke before that, he was going around. Uh, they had a uh, a group of singers uh, that were they were raising funds to uh, buy a van that would handle wheelchairs, so they could take some of the people to the ball games and different things. And that was his project. Larry uh, was uh, trying to uh, get a van. With, that would accommodate wheelchairs. And uh, they went around uh, to different places and they used to sing. And one of the persons that was in this group that he sang with was uh, Jean Hagen. You know who Jean Hagen was? She was the original uh, wife on. Uh, Danny Thomas's Make Room for Daddy, and she became sick, and they had to, she died on the show. She was a wonderful, wonderful woman. There were very few big stars uh, at the home. Mainly they were um, people that worked behind the scenes. There were only about four or five 
big uh, people that were in front of the screen. And so they became very close friends. And Jean was really wonderful to Larry, and they were very, very close in the home. And we used to visit a lot, and so we became very, very close friends too. And Larry had a wonderful time there. He was well-liked by everyone in the area, and he enjoyed, he was there for six years, and he really loved it. But he did have a friend who was a very big man, and uh, they had a very marvelous relationship, and yet no one knew about it, and that man was James Cagney. <laughs> they, they spent years as close friends, and when Larry was in the home, in the Screen Actors home, uh, Jimmy Cagney used to come to visit him, and he didn't want anybody to know that he was there. And I want you to know that as big a man as Jimmy Cagney was, he used to climb in and out of Larry's window so nobody would see him. <laughs> he was a very uh, serious man about his work. And uh, he, when he was working, there were no, no fooling around. That was it. He was <clears throat> nothing but work. And uh, I think my husband can tell you more about it than I can because he spent a lot of years with him and he can tell you just how dedicated all three of the men were. They were, they were hard workers and dedicated workers. And uh, they really put their heart and soul into what they did. And I think that's why they'll always be around. Check out the Stoogerama 3 DVD collection for more Stooge rarities.